My name is Todd Mickelson. I'm the president and CEO of Converis, and I'm really excited to share with you a major new product that we are launching today. If you've gone to our website, um, you may already know what we're going to talk about because we uh, released a press release and we turned on the capabilities on our website to expose what we announced in the first session this morning. But um, in summary, it's um, it's a, a new and exciting product, it's something that we've been working on in research and development for almost three years now. And as you'll see as we get into the session, uh, it, it's it's really nothing short of a significant technological breakthrough in the area of truth verification. So let's jump in. Um, exactly 10 years ago yesterday, on March 7th of 2013, we founded Converis with the goal of being the leading technology provider for credibility assessment, or what some uh, refer to as truth verification. At the time we formed Converis, uh, most solutions in the market, if not all, uh, had at least one of these three issues. Um, they were either unreliable, costly, or laborious. Uh, for many of the solutions at the time, and even continuing today, um, some of those solutions have issues in all of these areas. Um, some solutions uh, were unreliable because their accuracy wasn't much better than flipping a coin. Um, the testing process wasn't automated and the results were left too much to human interpretation, opening the door for bias. Uh, some of these solutions were and continue to be very costly because they all require uh, an experienced examiner and specialized equipment in order to run these kinds of tests. Um, other solutions were and continue to be laborious. Uh, because of the length of the time of the tests, the complexity of the testing protocols, the scheduling of participants, etc. So when we founded Converis, we did so with the belief that we thought we could really make a difference in this area because of the work that uh, John Kircher and David Raskin uh, and uh, the other members of our science team at the University of Utah had done in the previous 10 years relative to uh, ocular based deception detection. Uh, in summary, if you're not familiar, lying requires more cognitive effort. In other words, it takes more effort to lie than to tell the truth. This increase in cognitive load, as referred to scientifically, causes involuntary changes in the eyes. And um, by developing technology that can monitor these involuntary diagnostic changes uh, at the time we launched the company, we believe that we could deliver more automated and less labor intensive solutions. Solutions that you know, could be delivered via computer that people could run uh, without having significant training and experience in this area. So um, a little over a year later, a year, three months later, in June of 2014, we released uh, our first commercial product, iDetect. It was really the first accurate automated non-contact and fast solution in the market in terms of um, you know, being able to take a test. What we felt is you know, very, very quickly, um, iDetect test, tests take between 15 and 30 minutes depending on the number of issues that you're testing for. Test scores and reports are automatically generated within about five minutes. And the accuracy of iDetect is between 86 and 88%, um, depending on you know, which protocol you're running. Um, and um, pro test proctors, we call them proctors instead of examiners because really they, can be less experienced individuals who are trained on how to proctor a test, ensure that the test is going well. They can be trained in under a day. So since that time, we've um, seen a great um, um, adoption of the product. We have more than 600 customers in, in more than 60 countries. 
that are running tests in more than 50 languages. Uh, many of these customers are running thousands of ID Tech tests every year. And if you are one of our current ID Tech customers, we thank you for your embrace and use of the technology. And we look forward to continuing to support you in the use of ID Tech and these new products that we're announcing today. In 2021, uh, during the, in, in the middle of COVID, we launched our second major technological advancement. Uh, it's referred to as ID Tech Plus. It's really the first automated polygraph. Uh, with, with ID Tech Plus, you get all the capabilities and benefits of ID Tech combined with the traditional channels and sensors and capabilities of polygraph. But uh, you get this capability in a faster, less intrusive way. Uh, the uncomfortable blood pressure cuff in polygraph, which, which uh, you know, must the pressure of that cuff must be relieved periodically during the test, uh, causes polygraph exams to be longer. And you know, if you talk to people who have been polygraphed, they'll say it's the most uncomfortable aspect of a polygraph. Well, one of the major technological advancements in ID Tech Plus was this ability to replace the traditional blood pressure cuff with pulse transit time. Pulse transit time enabled us to automate a polygraph exam. You could still run it like a traditional polygraph in terms of advancing the questions, but the questions are presented by the computer. And we capture not only um, the traditional polygraph channels, but, but also the ocular capabilities that exist in, in ID Tech. And that enabled us to um, get even better accuracy um, where accuracy increased to 91%. So those were the first two, uh, this idea of using ocular and then the coupling of polygraph sensors with ocular in a less intrusive way were our two significant technological advancements in the last 10 years. Um, Despite the difference that we believe we've made in in uh, advances uh, in accuracy and being able to automate the test to make them shorter, um, to enable people with minimal training uh, to be able to use these products, um, I detect I detect plus and other existing solutions in the market still have some of the limitations that I mentioned. Uh, when we entered the space and formed the company 10 years ago. Specifically, specialized equipment is still required for all of these tests, which significantly limits who can be tested. Uh, in other words, the test takers must go to a location with specialized equipment, or you need an experienced examiner or proctor to take that specialized equipment to them. Furthermore, testing is limited and costly because um, with most of these tests, including ID Tech and ID Tech Plus, you need a proctor present during the test or an examiner must be present during the test. And uh, although ID Tech tests for single issue investigative um, uh, uh, tests uh, are uh, as short as 15 minutes in length from beginning to end, many customers and interested potential customers have said, depending on the circumstance and what they want to do, that that's still too long. Uh, they are looking for something that will enable them to verify truth, uh, like on the identity of an individual, whether it's um, their actual identity in a five minute test. Um, another issue with ID Tech is um, the protection of personal identifiable information or what's referred to as PII. In situations like identifying ver um, uh, verifying identity, where maybe you want to do so before you grant uh, someone a new account online uh, in a banking system, uh, well, you know you're not going to take an ID Tech station to them or have them come to an ID Tech station. There needs to be some way for that organization to verify something like your social security number. Um, your identity, your name, uh, without having to share what they're asking with us. 
without us seeing it and be able to do so in an online environment. Uh, so in summary, uh, a combination of these limitations uh, make it so that people can't take a test anywhere or anytime. And that's something that we've been trying to address in our research and development efforts for the last three years. So without further ado, I'm happy to say that we believe we've solved um, uh, all of these challenges. And uh, today I'm pleased to announce the release of the world's first accurate mobile app to verify truth. The product is called Verify, and it is, as I said, an app. It's a mobile app for iOS or Android phones. It um, has out of the box a, a, a two testing modes. Um, it has a mode where tests can be self-administered. So you can open the app and take a test yourself without a proctor or without uh, an examiner present. Uh, or you can flip the app into a more traditional proctored mode where you use the device much like you'd use an ID tech station to um, control the test. Um, use the device to give the test, but but you're sitting there watching to ensure that the person is being compliant during the test. Um, in terms of accuracy, we are still tuning the scoring algorithms. Um, in one of these following in the third session of this conference, uh, Dr. Kircher and Mark Handler are going to walk through a lab story study that we just completed uh, for one of the two protocols that we're releasing uh, and share the details of that accuracy. And you'll see in the details of that study that we are at, at about 80 percent, 79.2 percent uh, when using a fourfold uh, validation process. Um, which shows that the model is in fact generalizable and it's not biased towards the data that we collected. And we're seeing this um, in these initial stages on tests that take less than five minutes to run. Um, we're confident that in the ne very near term, perhaps in the next release, uh, we'll be able to, sh to share even uh, greater uh, accuracy as we continue to collect more data uh, and tune the way in which we're capturing that data so that it's at a higher quality and thus gives us better measurements, thus increasing the accuracy. Uh, because Verify is a mobile app, tests can be taken by yourself anywhere, anytime, and really in any language right from your own mobile phone. Uh, we have ID Tech tests running in 50 different languages today but it's only languages for which there is a text to speech voice that is available to be run in a standalone Windows based environment. And by moving to a mobile phone uh, with everyone using text to speech and speech to text capabilities every day, just to how we text and communicate uh, via our mobile phones. Uh, pretty much every language in the world is supported and the voices are excellent. They sound like you know, real humans and and um, are flexible in that environment. So uh, let's watch a short one minute video to give you a first look at uh, Verify uh, and how we envision organizations and individuals using it to verify truth. Uh, whether it be about a person's background prior to hiring someone, whether it be verifying their identity, uh, verifying whether they're a credit risk. So, you know, testing them for whether or not they lied about whether they've had other loans in the past uh, from non-traditional lenders that they defaulted on, whether or not they lied about their income. Um, and for for, for other various claims, whether it be like insurance claims uh, that, are, that are fraudulent or just really any claim. Uh, it could be a parolee who claims they didn't violate their parole and you want to verify that quickly. So let me jump over to the video. 
and we'll watch this one minute video. Um, I suspect that you're not hearing this because I didn't turn on my computer speaker. So let me stop sharing and relaunch this with computer speaker included. OK, there we go. And try this again. Some apps can make your smartphone smarter. But Verify by Converis will make your smartphone the smartest of them all. With Verify, you now have the power in the palm of your hand to accurately verify truth in just five minutes. Verify is the world's first app that can accurately and quickly verify the truth about a person's background, identity, creditworthiness, claims, and much more. It validates the truth by measuring involuntary changes in eye behavior. Tests can be self-administered anywhere, anytime, and in almost any language. Or organizations can proctor tests. Verify is a free app for Apple and Android phones. Use Verify to screen new hires or evaluate current employees, confirm a person's identity or online profile, validate a credit history or documents, or claims made about events, activities, accidents, compliance, and more. The way the world verifies truth has just significantly changed forever. When truth matters, use Verify. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a feel for what the product looks like. Um, the apps are actually available right now um, in the Google Play Store and the uh, Apple uh, App Store where you can download them uh, free of charge uh, to your device and start playing with it. Um, let's uh, shift now to um, how yeah, you know, what are the technical aspects behind the product and how it works? Um, in summary, to make use of the app itself, all you need is yeah, buddy. Yeah, so getting um, Paige, you need to mute yourself. You're on mute, Todd. All right. So all you need is a test link uh, to run a test. Uh, tests are associated with test links that can be created either in the Converse dashboard or via the Verify API. Uh, test links contain pertinent information about the test itself. So the exam ID, the test ID, the test creator ID, information about the servers from where uh, when the user clicks on this link, um, it's going to go and retrieve the test template as well as the server from where they're where it's going to go retrieve the test questions where these test questions could be personal identifiable information that you don't want us to see. So you're going to serve it up from your own server and it's just combined with the test template that comes from our server. Um, these links contain information about the server to where the data will be uploaded, specifically the measurements uh, that we will use to score the test. And things like the language and the locale uh, of where you want the test to be able to be run. So I can create a test in Spanish, for example, send a link to you in Spanish, and even though your phone is configured to a default English uh, setting, it will run the test in Spanish because I know you're a native Spanish speaker and I want to give you a test in Spanish instead. Um, so the idea here is, is that uh, I can text you a link, I can email you a link, uh, and when you click on it, the, you'll, be, you'll be prompted to go, it will check to see if you have the app already. If you don't, it will direct you to the App Store where you can download it for free. And then it will launch the test automatically, and uh, you can take it from there. Um, as I mentioned, apps for both Android and Apple phones are available today. Uh, the Android app will run on phones with the API 21 
It's also known as Lollipop version 5. Um, provided that the phone that you're using, which would be really any more recent phone, uh, has a screen resolution of at least 750 pixels. Uh, Lollipop was first released on Android phones in 2014. So the idea here is, is we recognize that there'll be situations where, you know, people are running all their phones um, and you still want to provide a link to them where they can take a test. And so we need to run on kind of the lowest common, lowest common denominator. Uh, the uh, Apple app requires iOS 12. iOS 12 was first released by Apple in 2018 with the iPhone 10. But um, iPhone 5S and above uh, technically um, is capable of running iOS 12. There may be some other limitations on certain versions of the iPhone uh, up to 10 where they that may not be the case. But for the most part, um, these apps will run on on the older phones, and that was that was uh, uh, something that we really focused on to make it broadly usable. As I mentioned, there are two verify testing modes. Verify tests can be self-administered or proctored. Uh, there is an audio presentation of the questions, so the test taker hears the questions read to them the test taker responds verbally. So you're not clicking with your fingers. You'll see why here in a moment. Um, you're hearing the questions presented uh, in an auditory way and you're re verbally responding to those questions. Uh, and the microphone captures and records those answers. Um, we currently offer both single issue and multi-issue test protocols. So if you're familiar with our ID Tech product, you know, we had our RCT protocol, which was single issue, and then we introduced the directed live protocol, which is single issue. And then we introduced our MCT protocol. Uh, in this case, we have um, a single issue protocol and uh, a multi-issue protocol that allows you to test on up to four relevant topics, where one of those topics is used as a comparison topic, just like we have on our standard uh, audio MCT, regular MCT, and hybrid MCT protocols. The single issue protocol that we refer to as a V for V for verify 3R is in a final beta stage. As I mentioned, we'll share the uh, results from the lab study that we just completed. We anticipate that before the end of March, we will publicize that it has been officially move to a production ready stage. Um, so between now and the end of March, you can use it. Um, you know, we think it's solid, but we want to just collect some additional data in the field uh, and monitor how it goes uh, before we flag it as production ready. Um, the multi-issue protocol is in what we call an early beta stage. It works from end to end. Uh, you can score a test and so forth. But um, we still have some additional data in that lab study to collect uh, before we finalize the algorithm and the model for it. So uh, the official word is it will be production ready sometime in April. Um, if we finish collecting the data between now and then and have scientifically validated it, then, then we'll make it production ready um, as soon as, as we meet that internal threshold and requirement. Um, so, in summary, both protocols are fully functional and ready for use, uh, ready for beta testing immediately. And we'll show some of those sample tests here in the live demos in a moment. Um, finally, as I mentioned, the actual testing time is five minutes or less. So that does not count the instructions at the beginning. If you have a have a, a longer set of instructions where you're describing the topics uh, that you're going to test the individual on, then that could make the test a little bit longer. Um, and it also does not count the tutorial that we're going to show you here in a moment that is about uh, a minute and 10 seconds long. Uh, the tutorial would be required for someone who's self-administering or taking the test in what we call solo mode. 
where you just send a link to someone and say, hey, answer, you know, I want you to answer some of these questions, click on the link and follow the instructions. Um, so that's that's about a minute and 10 seconds long. OK, well, let's go look at a demo. So I'm going to show you a recording of a self administered test. So a scenario where there's no proctor involved. Uh, where we've just sent um, someone has sent a link to someone um, that is going to take this test. Uh, the video will start uh, showing that the individuals already clicked on the link, downloaded the app, and the test has uh, has started. Um, uh, early uh, at the beginning of the test, it goes into a tutorial, a tutorial that that uh, has animations in it and describes the ideal circumstances uh, under which you should take the test. Like, obviously, you wouldn't want to take it in a noisy room. Uh, if it's using verbal cues to, for responding, then that could that could affect the test. Um, so in the video, we will transition from seeing the test taker hold the phone and starting that tutorial. Uh, to the tutorial itself so you can see it uh, in a larger fashion on your screen and hear it better and then it will transition back. But it is uh, an end to end test uh, that we'll go take a look at right now. And then we'll show a live version of this. Uh, in the demos at the end. OK, here we go. This test monitors your eyes to determine truthfulness. Follow these instructions for best results. Take the test indoors and avoid direct light sources such as windows, TVs, and computer screens, which can affect test results. Take the test in a quiet place without interruption. Sit comfortably and rest your elbow on a table. You need to hold your phone steady for about five minutes. Listen to instructions and answer verbally. Do not use earbuds or headphones. When instructed, remove eyeglasses. Contacts are OK. Reading is not required. When instructed, flip the phone upside down with the back camera at the bottom, facing you. Position the middle of the phone level with your eyes. Hold the phone about a phone length away. You will be alerted if the phone is out of position. Don't cover the camera with your hand or fingers. The phone's light will be enabled during the test. Do not look directly at it. Look halfway up the phone right above the camera. This is a truth verification test. It will ask about three crimes. It will ask if you stole a cell phone from an office. It will ask if you stole $20 from a secretary's backpack and it will ask if you stole a ring from a desk. You will now take the practice test. To begin, say start. Start. Remember to answer verbally. Regarding cell phones, I can see one right now. True. In regard to large screen TVs, I am looking at one right now. False. You have finished the practice test. To begin the actual test, say start. Start. This test is based on the idea that a deceptive person will have a difficult time answering the questions quickly and accurately. Some deceptive people answer too slowly. Other deceptive people make lots of mistakes. So if you take too long to answer or make too many mistakes, you will fail the test. If you do not hear a tone after you answer and you hear a time limit expired, speak up or you will fail the test. You will now take the truth verification test. To begin, say start. Start. Regarding the theft of the $20, I am innocent. True. On the topic of stealing the diamond ring, I did not do it. True. As to the theft of the cell phone, I am responsible. 
false. With regard to stealing the $20, I am guilty. False. On the topic of stealing the cell phone, I did not do it. True. With regard to stealing the diamond ring, I am guilty. False. Concerning the theft of the cell phone, I am guilty. False. Test completed. You can look at the screen now. However, do not close the app until the test is uploaded. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a feel for how the app works. Um, let's take a look at the actual verified test report that was generated from that demo test that we just watched. Um, so this is the report, most most of it trying to get it to fit on, on one screen. Um, you can see that um, the report not only gives us an indication of whether the person was credible or deceptive, but it also indicates the quality of the data that we collected if the test taker had taken the test in less optimal conditions, such as you know, a scenario that has bad lighting or loud environment that interfered with the microphone's ability to uh, capture the answers, then that data quality score would be lower than the 95% that you see on this report. Um, and obviously, uh, we we want to know about the data quality because if it's really poor, that could affect our ability to to measure whether or not the person was being deceptive. So we would take that into consideration in the score as well. Notice that um, we randomly take um, pictures of the test taker. This is on purpose. Um, we actually on the phone compare digitally whether the, the the same individual who started the test or the individual who started the test is the same individual who finished it. Uh, later in this presentation, I'll show you uh, options for not sharing this information with us because this would be considered personal identifiable information. And obviously a bank, for example, that's doing identity verification wouldn't wouldn't want to share this information with us. So we'll we'll talk about how this is supported in in a way where you can separate all this and still get the same benefit of knowing if it's the same person. Um, notice here in the report that we do give, just like in iDetect, we give a credibility score score on a scale of one to one hundred for each topic, and um, we make a definitive decision where fifty and above indicates that the person was. Uh, Truthful and 49 and below indicates that the person was deceptive. Or at least we detected um, signals that they were being deceptive. Um, we also provide a summary of the unexpected answers. An unexpected answer would be someone who's answering in a way opposite of what we would expect. We would expect them to say, no, you know, I didn't do it. But if they're continually saying yes, we want to know that because they may actually be confessing through the way they're answering. Um, we also um, capture um, the number of unanswered questions. So if they just sit there and don't answer or and it proceeds on to the next question, then we need to know that because um, that could be malingering or a countermeasure that they're applying, uh, thinking that if I just don't answer, then you know I don't I, I'm not going to fail, and we may actually fail you if you let too many of those uh, expire without answering them. And then finally, um, you'll notice that we have a category at, here at the very bottom left hand corner that says unrecognized answers. So uh, we do have the we have implemented into the product a way of uh, allowing for variations of the same answer. So in this demo, if Daniel had actually said yes instead of true, we would have counted that as uh, a recognized answer for true. If he had said no in place of false, it would have it would have worked. And we also accommodate for, you know, uh, situations where the microphone just doesn't pick it up 
um, but yet we know they're answering. We, we, we noticed early on as we ran tests that when you say false, if you don't accentuate the S on the end, the microphone may think you said, you know, fall instead of false. Um, and we have the ability to uh, expand the list of acceptable answers for each category uh, based on the quality of the microphone and whether it can pick that up. And this applies for any language as well. So it can it can get smarter in terms of what it what it's hearing. Um, finally, you'll see that we include the pretest instructions in the report so you know exactly what the test was about. And we provide uh, uh, at least one example of uh, of a question in each uh, for each of the relevant topics that we were testing on. Um, Mark and John will talk about the formatting of these questions because they do seem a bit odd, but there's a reason for that. And um, I'll let them talk about that when we share the results of the study that we just completed. OK, so what are we capturing? How are we detecting uh, ocular changes in order to be able to um, generate a score much like we do with eye detect and an eye tracker. Um, well, during the test, um, we capture and record really the same or similar data to those data that we capture and process in a standard eye detect test. Specifically, these features or predictors are used in the algorithm to detect deception and generate the, the, the credibility score, and, and they are um, um, the pupil diameter, X and Y gaze, blink rate, and some other proprietary uh, ocular measures to detect deception. So the first four that you see here are the same uh, predictors or features that we use in our scoring model in eye detect. Obviously, we have to detect them in a different way because we're not using an eye tracker, and I'll talk about that here in a moment. New to verify, so this does not exist in eye detect. Unless you're running eye detect plus and you're using the polygraph channels uh, through our physio tracker, um, we are utilizing uh, a vascular or a blood flow measurement. Uh, this is something that we're capturing through the camera on the phone. Um, and you'll see in the study uh, results uh, that Mark and John share uh, that that it is actually one of uh, one of the diagnostic uh, features. It's not as diagnostic as pupil, but it is an additional um, feature or predictor that helps us know the person was being deceptive. OK, so what happens during the test? Uh, as you saw in the demo, we have the person flip their phone to take full advantage of the better camera on the back of the phone. The camera on the front of the phone is more designed for selfies only. And if you get the phone uh, close enough for us to detect sub tenth of a millimeter changes in pupil diameter, then it's blurry. You can't control the focus on the lens. Um, you also don't have as easy of a way of turning on a light like the flashlight on the back to illuminate the face and uh, in some cases uh, prevent some of the reflections that show up in the eyes where our eyes function more like a mirror um, that could interfere with our ability to find and measure the pupil. So we um, during a Verify test, the Verify app video records eye behavior and movements at 10 to 30 frames per second, depending on the phone. The, uh, the most sophisticated, fastest phones um, don't allow you to record more than 30 frames per second. So depending on the quality of the phone, we capture as many frames per second as we can. And then we take that video and we uh, extract from that video each frame. And, and then we extract both a left and a right eye image 
from that frame. From there, these images are processed um, to identify and measure pupil diameter. Um, the images that you see here on the slide show uh, a four step process that we go through where we process and filter, in this case, uh, a dark brown eye. We specifically chose a dark brown eye because it's really difficult to distinguish between the pupil and the iris. And you can see that as we apply these various filters, um, we ultimately get to a state where there's a clear delineation between the pupil and the iris. And we can we can basically count the number of pixels um, uh, to derive the pupil diameter. If you look closely on these slides, the this these particular um, images that were taken out of the video uh, have reflections to the left and right of the pupil in the iris itself. And so one of the filtering steps that we go through is to identify um, reflections that may may make it difficult for us to identify the pupil and measure it. And we um, adjust the coloring of those reflections to be the color of the iris uh, and allow us to um, still identify the pupil and measure it. OK, from. From there, we identify uh, the area of the sclera. Um, sc the sclera is the white area around our eyes, um, uh, outside of the iris itself. Uh, the sclera is something that enables us to derive the X and Y gaze, blinks, and other eye-based measures. Uh, if you think about it, um, if I'm looking to the right, I'm going to have more sclera visible to the left of uh, of my uh, iris. And if I'm looking to the left, I'm going to have more sclera visible to the right. So um, despite the fact that we are only using one camera, even though your mobile phone may have three cameras on the back, uh, it the mobile phone only uses one of those three cameras. It chooses the lens that's best for the circumstances. So uh, unlike an eye tracker that has two cameras in it where you can more easily calculate gaze, um, we're calculating gaze through identifying and measuring um, the sclera around the iris. OK, so let's move to use cases. Verify, as you saw in the video, the intro video helps organizations or individuals verify the truth about a person's background, identity, creditworthiness, and claims, uh, and pretty much anything else that you want to test for. Um, iDetect is well known for its value and use in pre-employment screening and ongoing employee evaluations. In fact, uh, probably 95% of the tests uh, out of the 500,000 ID tech tests that we know about that have been run uh, are, are pre-employment or ongoing in employment um, uh, screening. Um, but Verify enables organizations to streamline even more the hiring process uh, by having <clears throat> applicants self-administer tests right after they apply online. So rather than having to invest time and money uh, in scheduling uh, an applicant to come uh, to a physical location and to have a proctor um, uh, give that test, although it would be a more accurate test if you're using eye detect, this al allows kind of a pre pre screen scenario where you could send a link to someone immediately after they apply and do an initial screening uh, that they run uh, in, in a self-administered uh, scenario. And for identity verification, Verify uh, could confirm a person's identity before tying it to a biometric um, or granting uh, a new account to them 
um, or granting a transaction to go forward or giving them credit or giving them access to something. The beauty here is um, there's nothing worse than uh, associating someone with an identity that's that's fake or fraudulent and then tying a biometric to it that they use going forward. Uh, the biometric is not really them. And now you're going to perpetuate something that's 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 invalid. It's especially bad if you were to hash this into blockchain uh, where it's immutable and you can't can't change it going forward. So the 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 benefit is that you can verify that identity on the front end and know that it is who they purport to be and tie it to a biometric and then use a biometric with confidence for allowing access or or future transactions or whatever it may be. For credit uh, use cases, uh, regardless of where the person is, you can validate their credit history or verify their application details or the documents, uh, verify if the documents they submitted were fraudulent. Um, we have a large client in, in Peru that has an ID tech station in 50 different dealerships, car dealerships. It used to be that it took two weeks for you to get a loan if you went in to buy a car from them because they went through a lengthy uh, verification process, including sending someone to your house and everything else because they don't have a central credit bureau. Um, and people get loans from other non-traditional sources. And uh, they switched to iDetect, uh, saved millions of dollars, um, but more importantly, they shortened that time to about four hours. So you could go in and look at a car, fill out the application in the dealership, and then walk down the hall and sit down in front of an ID tech station, and they would test you on whether or not um, you had defaulted intentionally on any loans, whether or not you lied about your income in your application. And the third issue, so this is an MCT test that they run, is whether or not you submitted any uh, doctored or fraudulent documents as part of your application process. Uh, um, imagine microloans now where you know you could go to uh, more of a retail store, apply for a loan right in the retail store to get a flat screen TV or a couch or whatever it may be, and uh, they could do uh, a loan verification there. Finally, with Verify, you can verify statements about uh, what we call claims, but those claims could be an insurance claim. It could be an online profile. Imagine in a marketplace um, being able to see that someone has been verified relative to whether they are insured, uh, licensed, or bonded, whether or not they're a registered sex offender. Uh, if they're going to come into your home to perform work, you may want to know that. Could be verifying parole compliance. Um, you know, they claim that they didn't violate their parole, and you could quickly and easily verify that with Verify. So let's look uh, quickly at two examples here. The first is uh, the hiring uh, process that I mentioned, where you could really streamline uh, the, the hiring process by pre-screening someone uh, right after they apply for a job. Um, and the scenario by which this could be done, and uh, Russell and I are going to demonstrate um, the, the actual implementation of this on a real site uh, here at the end. But the idea is um, the applicant you know, visits the employer's website, they fill out the application, um, the information goes to the employer's system where on the back end they have a set of processes where in some cases, they programmatically check to see if your address is correct, see if you have a police record, see if you meet the minimum requirements for education, whatever it may be. And if you do, they could programmatically generate a verified test and a verified test link, which is automatically texted to you or emailed to you, depending on the implementation. And when you click on that link, um, it uh, prompts you to download the app because you you know, you wouldn't have it at this point. Download it for free from the App Store. You take the test. The data is processed and uploaded. So processed on the phone, um, uploaded to the Conveyor scoring server where it's scored, 
and a report is generated uh, uh, from which the employer can now make a decision. Uh, they could potentially just extend an, an offer uh, or um, you could use this to make a decision on whether or not maybe you want to fast track this applicant because they have all the right capabilities um, that you're looking for and they passed. And so you're going to spend your limited uh, time and effort uh, with applicants um, uh, on these more expensive steps of bringing them in and doing a face-to-face -face interview and so forth. Here's just a quick example of um, uh, example in Mexico of uh, three different um, organizations that all have a turnover of 15%. And you can see we've, you know, we're showing uh, a scenario of what the estimated loss and costs are due to turnover. Uh, estimated cost in Mexico for implement, implementing Verify, the number of people you'd have to test based on that turnover and uh, an estimate of how many applicants for each job um, that you would test to fulfill that job. And you can see that there's a huge uh, ROI, uh, 850% to 1,700% uh, on, um, on the money that would be saved by hiring better people, by reducing some of the losses that occur by not uh, properly vetting people or spending time and money uh, on uh, on applicants in steps of the process that are more expensive. OK, second scenario, and we will also demonstrate this scenario um, using an actual implementation that's live. Um, the scenario um, is a, a fintech uh, that uh, implements Verify for identity verification in a way where they can do so without sharing any personal identifiable information or PII with Comparis. This implementation uses the Verify API. So rather than going to our dashboard and creating a link manually and sending the link to someone, this is using our uh, application programmer interfaces uh, to um, generate the, the test link to to send the link and uh, in this case to manage what we call data sites. Data sites are variable strings of information in your test that you don't want us to see um, and that need to be dynamic. Um, so we'll show you a demo of that here in a moment, but the scenario is this someone goes to a location to fill out uh, an application. In this case, the scenario is they're applying for a new account. It could be like a new bank account. Um, and they go to the FinTech's website where they put in their information in the FinTech uh, website's form. That information would include some PII, like uh, their name, their address, perhaps their birth date, their social security number. Um, you know, information that, you know, they definitely don't want to share with us or anybody else. That PII is captured by the FinTech and stored internally on their server. But at the same time, it's replicated or shared with the internal, uh, with an internal question server. So that's what we call uh, a server that uh, a customer manages where they put the information that they want to present in, um, in, a, in a test. Um, in most cases, it's questions, but it could be part of the uh, preamble, uh, the instructions at the beginning uh, in the test itself. Um, anyway, the information that they supply to the FinTech is, is also used by the FinTech to generate the Verify test link. Um, separate from the fintech's architecture that I showed you before, it exists the Verify server. Um, this server has a couple of functions. One is it serves up the test template. Uh, so what's expected when someone answers the first question? Are we expecting them to say true or false? Um, we don't know what's being asked, but we need to at least know uh, are we expecting them to say true or false? 
This server also scores um, the data uh, after the test is taken. So when the applicant clicks on the link that's been provided to them after they fill out this form, um, iDetect is launched if they have it already on their device. If not, they're prompted to download it and then it launches. And at the time it launches, it will request the questions, including the PII, from the FinTech's question server. And simultaneously, it will request the, te the test template from the Convera server. Both the questions and the test template um, information are, are, in, are encrypted. So it's a requirement when this data is served up from the respective servers, it comes to the user's phone in an encrypted uh, form, and then it is um, merged together, the test template with the questions stitched back together on the phone to provide a unique personalized test to the applicant that they're going to take on the phone. So the applicant takes the test, as you saw before, and then the data at the conclusion of the test, um, specifically the measurements are, and how they answered are sent to the Convera server for scoring. At the same time that happens, the applicant's photos that you saw in the test report um, and any other sensitive information, it, it could include a customized consent acceptance uh, that's digitally logged uh, at the time they click on the consent in the Verify app. Uh, all of that information gets sent back to the FinTech question server. And then at that point, the FinTech uses the Verify API to request the scores and the information on how the person answered the questions from the Convera server to assemble it with the questions and any other information that you know was sent up um, to the phone from the question server. It's assembled all together to generate a report, an internal report for the FinTech. Um, and um, anyway, that's how it works. So we will demonstrate this functioning from end to end uh, here at the end uh, using um, this exact scenario uh, and, and uh, data sites and the API to uh, serve it all up. So in summary, uh, Verify is our third and latest technological advancement. Like iDetect uh, and iDetect Plus, uh, Verify validates truth by measuring involuntary eye behavior. Uh, it's really the, the first accurate, and that's the key, accurate mobile app for truth verification that exists today in the world. Verify enables organizations or individuals to verify the truth, uh, as you've seen here, about a person's background, identity, credit worthiness, claims, and, and, and much more. Um, the, the best news in all of this is it, it is available today. So it's... Um, uh, officially released. Uh, the protocols that I talked about are in a beta form, that, but they are functioning and the the application and the technology behind is is uh, is production ready and available. So in conclusion, after 10 years and with the addition of Verify to the Converis product suite, we believe that we're addressing all the challenges that I uh, teed up at the beginning uh, that existed when we first founded Converis and went to work on iDetect. Whereas 10 years ago, the available solutions um, were unreliable, costly, and, and laborious, or laborious in some cases, the solutions you know, didn't have problems in all three of these areas that the Converis product suite now offers uh, a complete, accurate, cost-effective, and um, a set of simple solutions. And anyway, if you're not already a customer, we would welcome the opportunity to continue to support you in, in deploying uh, any of these Converis solutions. 
that are now available. So with that, uh, that's that's it for me.